Hi friends, here in this video, I will be explaining the stress versus strain graph for ductile material. So, let's get started. Now, in order to draw the stress versus strain graph for the ductile material, I will first draw the diagram of a rod in order to explain it. So, in this diagram, I have drawn a rod which is subjected to an axial load. As we can see here, the load is of pole type. The rod is having diameter D and the length is L. Under the action of this load, as we can see, the length of the rod is going to increase and the diameter will decrease. So, the material which I am going to assume here, that is the ductile material because this stress versus strain graph is for the ductile material which can be easily drawn into wires or that material which can easily flow when the load is applied. So I have to plot a graph for this and here in the stress versus strain graph stress is plotted on the y axis denoted by sigma and strain is plotted on the x axis denoted by small e. Now the behavior is in such a way that at first the relation is linear so here we have 0 and this I am assuming it to be as 0.1 so up to 0.1 we can see that the relationship being linear of stress versus strain. So it means that if we increase the stress and how can stress be increased it is stress is denoted by the formula which is load upon area. So sigma is P upon A where P is the applied load. We can easily say that stress is directly proportional to the applied load. So I can say that sigma is directly proportional to P. So in any material if we want to increase the stress then the load has to be increased. So if P value increases that is the applied load increases then the stress value will increase. Here in this case P will be increased gradually because the graph which I am plotting over here that, that is not for the suddenly applied load. It is for a gradual loading. So at first when P small amount of load is given the stress will increase and because of the increase in stress as we can see here this small amount of stress is sigma so if st stress increases even the strain will increase as we can see here denoted by small e similarly if i increase the stress further by applying the load the strain will also increase and it will go up up to 0.1 and this 0.1 is called as the elastic limit so i can say here that 1 or from 0 to 1 it indicates the elastic or I can say that in simple simple terms it can be called as the proportional limit after that there will be elastic limit so from 0 to 1 it indicates the proportional limit it means stress is directly proportional to strain and when the relation is stress is directly proportional to strain it means it is obeying Hooke's law. Now, the moment we reach point 1 where the proportional limit is getting completed and when I remove the load over here, it means when the load is removed, so stress becomes 0, means the material will regain its original shape and size. The moment the load is removed from here, stress becomes 0 and the material will come back to its original position that is whatever the strain inside the material is there that is also eliminated and we get the material back to its original position so that is the proportional limit then when we go on increasing the stress further by increasing the load p value what will happen is we are going to get get a small curve here which is denoted by point 2 now at point 2 when we are reaching so that will be called as the elastic limit 
so from 1 to 2 we can say that it is under elastic limit but as we can see the relationship is not linear like from 0 to 1 it is following a curve so it means when we reach up to point 2 the material will behave as in an elastic manner it means from 0 to 1 it was proportional stress was proportional to strain and even in that region also the material is elastic but when we reach from 1 to 2 in that case the relationship is not linear but still up to point 2 the material is behaving in an elastic manner the moment we release the load from point number 2 the material will regain its original shape and size that is stress becomes 0 and even the strain eliminates so the material behaves in an elastic manner up to from starting from point 0 1 and 2 at that up to point 2 it will be behaving in an elastic manner now what will happen further after point 2 when we are reaching point 3 we can see that between 2 and 3 there is not much appreciable increase in the stress but strain has increased so this point 3 is called as the upper yield point and when the material has reached the yielding stage now when it reaches up to point 3 the material is not going to regain its original shape and size when the load is removed it means it is permanently deformed so 2 to 3 is called as the permanent set permanent set and the material deforms permanently and point 3 is called as the upper yield point then after getting the upper yield point the next one we reach up to point 4 even at point 4 we can say that there is not much appreciable increase in stress but strain has increased drastically so from point 3 up to point 4 the strain has increased drastically but there is not much increase in stress so what we can say that now the material is getting deformed permanently even though the load is not increased by a much higher value so point 4 is called as the lower yield point Now once the yielding has started and then the load value if it is increased tremendously then the strain also increases so there is increase in stress there is increase in strain the material reaches up to this point 5 and at point number 5 we can say that the material is subjected to the maximum amount of stress denoted as sigma max the maximum stress and this point 5 it is called as the stress at point 5 it will be called as the ultimate stress so ultimate stress means that the load which is applied to this rod will be the maximum load and the corresponding stress would be the maximum stress called as the ultimate stress and just after that that is when the material has reached the maximum load even if we try to decrease the load even if the load is falling as we can see the load is falling so even the stress is falling but strain is increasing considerably so strain is going on increasing and finally the material will break at this point which is point number 6 so point 6 is called as the breaking point and finally the material will break so this point 6 is called as the breaking point it means now the material is going to originally break at this location that is point 6 so just by looking at the behavior of this graph we can see that it is flowing so because of being a ductile material and the moment it crosses the maximum stress there are chances of the material to break even though the load is decreased as we can see here the stress is less in this region compared to the maximum stress so try to avoid the material being loaded up to its maximum condition because if the material is loaded up to maximum load the stress would be maximum 
and even though when we decrease the load after reaching the maximum value then at any given point the material will break so we have to avoid the material getting reached up to this maximum stress and to avoid that we use a factor which is called as the factor of safety so here we can see this is the behavior of the material and i can also say that when this material would be breaking it will look something like this that is this is called as the cup and cone arrangement so there is a neck formation and this neck formation would be more prominent when the material reaches the maximum stress value and finally it is going to break at the minimum cross section so here this is also called as the necking of the material and it will finally break at 0.6 so when we summarize this stress versus strain graph from 0 to 1 it is called as a proportional limit where the material is obeying Hooke's law stress is directly proportional to strain then it reaches from 1 to 2 up to that it is called as the elastic limit where again up to 0.2 when we remove the load the material is going to regain its original shape and size then we reach 0.3 which is called as the upper yield point where there is not much appreciable increase in stress but the strain has increased similarly we reach 0.4 which is called as the lower yield point again the stress is not increased much but the strain has increased and then we see that after reaching the lower yield point the moment we increase the stress the strain also increases drastically we reach the maximum stress value corresponding to, to the maximum load and then there is the maximum strain over here as we can see here corresponding to the maximum stress but apart from that we are going to get one more maximum value of strain which will be corresponding to the breaking point giving the maximum strain in the material and finally it is going to break at point number six forming the cup and cone arrangement so in short that was an explanation regarding the stress and strain graph for the ductile material at the end if you'll find my videos helpful you can like share comment and subscribe our channel and share it amongst your family and friends thanks for watching